Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Foo Master Series. I'm Amelia Carbine, your host, and um, today we have a really awesome guest. We have James Russell with us. I think everybody knows who he is. <laughs> uh, if you don't, you're probably pretty new <laughs> to the scene. Um, but James is... Uh, I, I just, I don't know why I, I always think of, you know, the, the sweetheart of cake, you know, I just love you, James, you are just so nice, <laughs> well, and thank you're just, you. just a great person, I just, you know, uh, the first time I, the first time I met James was at, in Oklahoma, um, I think back in 2008? Yes. That's, yeah, that's mm -hmm. about right. Anyway, I... I just met him for the first time. I went and introduced myself to him. I was like, oh, cake celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I just, just so nice, so outgoing. Went to dinner, just lots of, you know, fun conversation. Just a uh -huh. really, really neat person. So I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> and I'm oh, glad well. that I know you, and I'm glad that you're a, a friend. So. Oh, well, thank you for having me back, Amelia. <laughs> yeah, anytime, really, anytime. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we want to just go ahead and, and talk about you a little bit. Talk about um, you have a Craftsy class that has just come out recently, uh -huh. which is really, well, today. No, it released today. Gosh. Yes. <laughs> released today. And we are going to talk more about your Craftsy class. Uh, we're going to talk about a discount that you guys are, are going to be able to have through Cake Fu. And we are going to give away a a uh, free a class to a lucky winner, <laughs> and it, it should be it should be lots of fun. So yeah, James, tell me about uh, what has been going on with you lately. Um, I know just a minute ago you mentioned um, some classes that you're going to be teaching. You want to mention those again for everybody so that you know everyone that's listening can can hear. Absolutely. Um, I think one of the most exciting events that's uh, coming up will be what's called the Cake Carnival. It's in uh, Kitchener um, at Icing Inspirations, November 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, so that's going to be three classes, and each class is going to have a dynamic duo. Um, so I'll be paired up with um, Mary Maher of the Cake Girls. So she and I are working on a project together. Uh, Marina Sousa is paired up with Elisa Strauss, and then Joshua John Russell and Karen Portaleo um, are teaming up together as well. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. Um, you're going to get lots of techniques, information, um, cake wise, and I just highly recommend that you guys join us for uh, a spectacular event. That just sounds like a blast. I, I want to be there. <laughs> I want to go and be there. <laughs> so where, where again, was this? In... It's um, being hosted by a lady called Chrissy Boone. She owns Icing Inspirations oh, out okay. in Kitchener. Um, it's in the Toronto uh, area. It's about an hour outside of Toronto. It's in Ontario. Um, she's a fantastic host, a wonderful person, a great organizer of classes. And I am positive that all the students that enroll are going to have a wonderful experience. That is great. Is there a website with information on that, if anybody yes. wants to join that? Yes, it's um, icinginspirations.ca. Um, you can also find in, uh, information on too nice to slice.ca. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, icinginspirations.ca. CA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Canada. Yeah. All right. That sounds just like a blast. And if anyone can go, I would recommend that. So that's that's a lot of big names, a lot of talent. Big mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. So definitely if you can if you can head out that way, that's that's definitely something you want to do. Anything else going on? Um I'll be at the IBIE in Las Vegas in October. Okay. Um and it's, it's a huge show. Uh, if you're in the cake industry, restaurant industry, I highly recommend you attend, even if it's just for a day. Uh, lots mm -hmm. of large equipment, food. Um, but yeah, it's just very interesting. That's really cool. I, mm -hmm. I actually haven't ever attended the IBIE, and I live here. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an, an extra special effort this year to, to make it over there. It seems like when it's 
there right next to you sometimes you just you know think oh I'll make it over there yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you don't <laughs> so yeah this year I'll I'll I'll, I'll make sure I'm there mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome okay well um let's jump into I want to show you guys we're gonna kinda go inside the world of Craftsy today and so we're gonna talk about uh, James's Craftsy class um, maybe you can share a story or two about uh, your experience and then we'll talk about um, James has shared a bunch of pictures of like the tools and things that he has been using for um, for recording this crafty class and for you know when he does flowers in general so and so we'll talk about all of that um, we'll just we'll just try and get some some good information out there to you okay so let's pull up our first picture here you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Oops, there we go. Okay, so this is you in the Craftsy kitchen. Yeah. So that is that's just really exciting. Is this a, just a really big? I mean, I can see they've got all kinds of, you know, cameras and mics and lights and everything. It just seems like a really nicely well done production. It really is. I mean, Craftsy really does it well. They know how to do a top notch. Uh, studio. They have fantastic producers. Uh, the company itself is just very well organized, very well put together. Uh, it's very user friendly. The platform is absolutely amazing. And you, you feel welcome and you feel at home when you're on set at the Craftsy studio. And I mean, I, I really and truly enjoy um, being on set with them because you, know, you, you feel like part of the family. Awesome. Well, I mean, it just, I, I've seen enough crafty classes. I, I have a bunch of them. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of them. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've watched enough to see that, you know, there is just something about the crafty classes that is so nice. I mean, mm -hmm. for, for example, to, you know, if, if I'm okay jumping to someone else's crafty class, um, last week we had... Um, uh, Lisa Brazell on uh -huh. on Cake Fu, and she just released a, a Craftsy class, and I I've actually taken a class with her live. Uh, it was basically the same class that she taught on um, on this on Craftsy, and so I thought I don't know if I need the class because you know I I've already taken the class. So, and I took it live, you know, uh -huh. which was wonderful, wonderful. But then I, I did go and I got the class and I was looking at things and watching things and I just, oh yeah, I remember she taught that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so it's a really great resource, even if you do go and take a lot of classes, it's a great way to have, you know, that reminder of, you know, of what it was that you learned in that live class. And, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you had that opportunity to go hands-on, but, you know, we're it's just natural for people to forget things. And I, I guess I'm more forgetful than others. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it was really nice to be able to go back and see everything, and I could rewind, I could pick which chapter I wanted to watch, I could, you know, it, it's just a really nice setup, so... I'm a fan. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> Good. All right. So let's look at um, some of the pictures of um, basically your your setup. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's kind of fun. The the rolls and the tapes yes. and the they make it really official, don't they? They do. <laughs> Very <laughs> official. Yeah. So you can see on the picture, it's um it's roll four, take three, and this is mm -hmm. the parrot tulip center bud. Um, and you can see the director is Tanya, and the camera is Marshall and uh, Michelle. And Tanya, Marshall, and Michelle just are wonderful people. They made it so much easier for me. Um, but you can see basically the setup is, um, you know, most of my uh, line with New York cake, the veiners, the, the cutters, the, the ball tools, the pizza wheel cutters. Um, and you can see it's just all nicely laid out, uh, ready for production. Yeah, okay, so I, I want to talk about, you know, just everything that you have sitting there. Because I know that a lot of people, um, they, they don't know where to start, they don't know what they need. 
or or they already have everything but they're looking for something better you know I I I think that you know seeing someone's exact setup is really nice you know and to know mm -hmm. because okay I saw this picture on Facebook you posted this picture on Facebook actually it was the one before mm -hmm. and I saw this uh, rolling pin stand this little rolling pin holder <laughs> I want one <laughs> where did you get that <laughs> yes uh, the first time I saw it was actually at Kate camp uh, back in July oh, really? and I got it from you know no one other than Nicholas Lodge um, oh, he is like the gadget king <laughs> 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 so I saw it and I had to have it and um, it's the perfect little rolling pin holder um, and I just highly recommend everyone have one. It's my newest favorite toy. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, you know, when I'm doing flowers, I tend to, everything just rolls around and goes everywhere. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay, where did my little scissors go? Oh, dang uh -huh. it, where's my rolling pin? You know, just, <laughs> where is it? You know? Yeah. So to have something like that where you can just set it there, that's the place where it goes. It's perfect uh -huh. right there. I love that. I absolutely yes. love that. Okay, so you can get that at... at uh, from Nicholas Lodge. From Nicholas Lodge, yes. okay. And he already right. has, I believe he already has them uh, listed on his website, and I'm pretty sure he has them in two or three different colors. Okay. Uh, when, I was, when I was at Isis, um, he was selling the clear acrylic rolling pin holders, um, so I actually picked up several of those uh, just to have you know, for classes and personal uh -huh. use. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. But yeah. the green one is kind of, it's fun. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's like cake green, right? Yes. <laughs> Everyone has that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, so up here we have, um, let's see, we have the, the flower formers right here that look like the little um, egg shape. Mm -hmm. Where Where do you get those? Those, um, those, yeah, those I use actually quite a bit uh, mm -hmm. for forming and drying a lot of things. Um, you can get them at any like cake supply store in the chocolate section, chocolate, and yeah. yeah, and you usually see them around Easter time because they're chocolate eggs, um, and they come in different mm -hmm. sizes. But you can also find them at Country Kitchen or CK Products. Uh, sometimes you'll find them at Michaels, uh, but usually just around the Easter holiday. Great. I actually just learned of Country Kitchen at Kate Camp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got some really cute stuff. <laughs> they do. All right. And then you've got a more round flower former up in the, the corner over here that you have yes. a tulip in. Yes, uh, to the top left of that uh, picture, it's uh, a half circle. Um, and again, mm -hmm. those are chocolate formers. And I, what I do is once I partially dry some of my petals, and in particular for this one, it was the, the parrot tulip, mm -hmm. I like to position three of those partially dried petals inside of that half round circle um, that I've actually poked a hole through so I can put the wire in. And nice. I, it gives me that perfect shape, that cupped tulip shape. That's perfect because you know a lot of times you'll you'll dry your your flowers in you know the former and then you try to put them together and they just don't fit right. Mm -hmm. So I mean if if you do that where they're partially dry, um, and I'm I'm sure that um, not all gum pastes work the same. So I don't no. know if I don't know if that'll work with every uh, form of gum paste, <laughs> but you know for for the ones that are really you know flexible but still firm, mm -hmm. you know. You could you could probably put those together and stick those in there, let them dry that way, and then they're going to fit together a lot better. I love that. Yeah, that's great. Yes. Yeah. All right. So speaking of the gum paste, you have your own. Oh, that's nice. Oh, there you, go. <laughs> you have you have your own gum paste line that um, that you that you have through. NY? Fonderific. Fonderific. Oh, Fonderific. That's right. Yes. That's right through Fonderific. Yes, um, it's been out now for over a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's I I really enjoy the the gum paste. Um, you have to condition it when you take it out of the container, and how I recommend doing it is put it in the microwave for about ten seconds. Mm -hmm. um, soften it up a little bit. You don't want to heat overheat it because it dries out the gum paste. 
but just soften it up a little bit and then work with small portions at a time and then literally dunk your gum paste into water and then that's how I condition my gum paste. Awesome. Mm -hmm. that's, that's cool. Well, I have actually used your gum paste before. I've never mm -hmm. dunked it in water before. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'll go try that. I, but without doing that, it actually works really well as yes. far as I, I, I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, everyone has their preference on uh, consistency and workability, and I tend to like a more stiffer gum paste to work with. Um, but, you know, everyone likes has a different uh, gauge of uh, workability. So you can add as much water to the gum paste as you like. Uh, you're not going to ruin the consistency or change the chemical balance whatsoever. Um, but as you're working with it, it may get a little bit tacky in your hands. Just put a little bit of shortening on your hands and start conditioning it and it's beautiful. Great. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, let's go back to our setup again and look at um, Let's see, what else do we have here? You have um, a piece of styrofoam there to, to put the flowers in. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your soft foam. And then mm -hmm. you've got a nice blue mat. Mm -hmm. Are these all things that you can get at NYK? Um, you can get the mat, the, the thinning mat from New York Cake. Um, mm -hmm. The placemat itself is just a placemat. You know, you can get oh, it really? at, yeah, at Bed Bath okay. & Beyond, um, Target. Any anywhere that sells uh, placemats. Perfect. We like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I I know a lot of times I'll you know just run, uh, grab something you know, and it just has to. That's got to work. You know, you, uh -huh. sometimes you just don't you have you you know have the time or whatever to order something online and get it to uh -huh. you. So having something where you can just run out, grab it, and be back. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> we like that. And your floral wire, a floral wire. Sorry, <laughs> floral wire is kind of a a big, you know, a big deal. If you don't have the right kind of floral wire, it's gonna, you know, Make your flowers are not. Yes, yeah. complicated. That's yes. what I was going for. <laughs> That's what I was going for. So yes, it will be a lot more complicated if you don't have a good floral wire. Mm -hmm. So is there a, a kind or several kinds that you would recommend or a brand or anything like that? I, I prefer the paper covered wire, uh, the Japanese wire, mm -hmm. um, over the cloth covered wire. I just find the cloth covered wire to be very bulky and uh, when you insert the wire into your gum paste it tends to uh, go through the gum paste. Uh, the paper covered wire is a lot finer. Um, I, I just think it's it, it works a lot better than the cloth covered wires. Okay, great. You know, I I agree with you. <laughs> that's yeah. the kind of wire I use too. <laughs> yeah. I think it's I think it's just industry wide. That's probably the best thing to use mm -hmm. because it just works really well. Um, there you know there are different methods of getting your gum paste and your wire together. You know so. Mm -hmm. But inserting it, if you if you have you know if you have your gum paste and you're trying to you know kind of just insert it into the the groove, if that's you know if you have a groove board and you're trying to insert it that way, it's going to be really difficult to do. If mm -hmm. you're you know if there's fabric on it, it, it tends to slide up the the wire and then mm -hmm. you've got, you know, then you've got issues. Yeah. So. All right. Okay, and then um, you have, let's move on to the next picture, the, the veiner. These are wonderful veiners. Oh my goodness, look at that picture. <laughs> <laughs> They've got great detail on them. I love those. Are these your, your veiners? Yes, this is my poppy veiner available mm -hmm. at New York Cake. Um, it's a great silicone veiner. You don't need to dust it with any cornstarch um, because the paste doesn't stick to uh, the veiner itself. And you can also use it uh, with isomalt so it withstands high temperatures. Cool. Oh, I mm -hmm. love the idea of the isomalt. And it's, it's grooved deep enough that isomalt would look really awesome in, yes. in that kind of a mold. Yes. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you can find those at NYK, right? Yes, you can. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So when you vein your flowers, um, and then do you vein them first and then smooth the petals, or do you smooth the petals then vein them, or? Um, I I typically thin the edges first mm -hmm. and then vein them, and then depending on the flower, if it's ruffly or has some sort of twisted look to it, then after it's veined, that's when I add all of the movement. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I find if you try and ruffle and then vein, all that ruffling gets just kind of disappeared once you yeah, press the petal and vein it. <laughs> yeah, or smashed. And then you have a really odd looking <laughs> petal that you really can't use. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a really good uh, a, a good way to do it. Um, I know when I, when I do my flowers, sometimes I'll actually uh, vein it and then and then smooth out the edges. I, I think for me it just depends on, you know, the look I'm going for. If I want it, yeah. you know, to be more of a, a a smooth, not as not as textured. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, your flowers are always amazing. So. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and you also have um, a line of these uh, petal dust that you have just come out with. Is that you want to tell us about those? They they look. I love the colors. I oh, love thank those you. Colors. Thank you. Yeah, so um, the jars that you see in the picture, those are um, larger jars that um, were given to me for my personal use in classes and primarily for the, the shoot at Craftsy. Um, but I uh, partnered with the Sugar Art, um, and I developed three uh, color kits. I have a, a bold color kit where the colors are rich jewel tones, and then I have a, a second color kit where uh, the, the colors are lighter, more pastel-like, and the third color kit is a luster color kit, and in each kit there are 12 colors. Here, I think we actually have a picture of that right there. Yes, there you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see all three kits there, um, and uh, the jars are the three gram jars. And they they sell for uh, forty eight dollars a piece. Okay, so what is this micro bond thing? That's uh, that's just a uh, um, a process by which the the colors are manufactured. Oh. It's a very scientific and technical explanation that I probably wouldn't do justice. <laughs> <laughs> but I can say that the colors are FDA approved. Um, right. They are kosher certified. And you can dilute them with alcohol, um, uh, extracts, any clear extracts, and um, cocoa butter. So you can do chocolate oh. painting with my colors. Ooh, I love that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great. Yes. <laughs> I love that. OK. I like the little R on the top. That's yeah, that, yeah, okay. that's my logo, the JR. And if you're interested in, uh, in these color kits, then just go to the Sugar Art website, and uh, you can get them directly from them. Perfect. All right. I I think that a lot of people will be excited about these colors, because you know, I, do you get to pick the colors and and everything, or is that yes. something that? Yes. Yeah. So all of the all of the colors that are in my color kits are all custom made. Um, mm -hmm. I I sent them uh, color swatches of. Um, things that I really enjoyed, <clears throat> excuse me, and were inspired by, and they uh, manufactured the color, and you know, I think they did a wonderful job with it. Awesome. Well, that is wonderful. I I'm excited to to try out some of those. That's really cool. Okay. Um, and here you we have a picture of you uh, dusting some of these some of these petals, mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you're using your, your colors, yes. your petal dusts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah you know, so I, this, go ahead. Oh, I just, I was going to say, I, I remember hearing someone, I don't know who I was talking to, but we were talking about how um, you make your flowers so exact and precise and so botanically correct that you know lusters you don't you don't put lusters on your petals and let, you know unless they're <laughs> fantasy flower. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think I think you had that conversation with Marina. <laughs> Probably. Uh <-huh. laughs> Probably, I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I I love 
I love making a flower that looks real, you know, mm -hmm. and and it looks, you know, real on a cake, you know, and to to take a cake to, you know, a wedding or something, set it down. And this happened to me just a couple of weeks ago. I had mm -hmm. I was I was actually there at the wedding because it was for my niece, mm -hmm. and um, the the person that you know the I guess the caterer I don't know was cutting the cake, and. Um, she was just talking about the cake, and it was pretty, and then she got to these flowers, and she's like, oh, these are sugar! <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that's the, I think that's the fun part of, of you know, being able to make a flower look real, uh -huh. and you know, I think you do an amazing job of oh, thank you. that, of making them look just so lifelike, that I'm sure that anybody looking at pictures of your cakes would have to, I mean, because I, I know I do that, when I see a, a really pretty cake and it's got flowers on it, I have to look a little closer, are those real, are they sugar? <laughs> and if you can do that, then you know you've got a, you know, a, a good flower. <laughs> true, very true. So. Yes, and like I said, you do an amazing job of that. Oh, well, so. thank you. Yeah, I back to your crafty class. I would highly recommend that to anybody. So okay, mm -hmm. and then over here we've got this is your your setup. You're about ready to decorate your cake. A beautiful cake, by the way. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, so this is actually one of the last lessons in my craftsy class, the spring and summer sugar flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see uh, the setup is, you know, the parrot tulips, the poppies, the leaves, um, and then there's some tubing, uh, white floral tape and such. And really the, the inspiration that I drew from uh, for this particular cake design was back um, when I did the Sweet 16 Cake Challenge. When I had that one tier where the the parrot tulips were, you know, kind uh -huh. of very uh, very uh, organic looking um, mm -hmm. and, and very stemmy, and uh, so that's uh, where I drew the inspiration for this class, just to to bring some new techniques, uh, you know, a different kind of vibrance and, and edge to to the class. That's funny that you say that because honestly, that's exactly what I thought of when I saw that the finished cake. I thought, uh -huh. oh man, that reminds me of the one <laughs> that yes. was on Food Network. <laughs> I yeah. love that. I, mm -hmm. I love that cake, by the way. It was gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you. God, can you believe that was back in 2007? <laughs> Holy <laughs> Time cow. flies. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that was, a, that was a while ago. Um, yeah, and that was my first, very first challenge. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. A beautiful cake. Absolutely well, thank gorgeous. You. Yeah, so um, anyone who's uh, planning on enrolling in this class, you'll get to learn um, just the techniques and the process uh, that I go through to, you know, to achieve the, the long, tulipy, um, very whimsical stems. So it's a lot of fun, and I hope you guys like it. That is so cool. Oh, I so need to watch this because <laughs> I loved, loved that cake. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. so. All right. And I, I see that you've got, okay, so what flowers do you teach in this class? I see poppies and I see the, the tulips. Yeah, so I do, I do the poppies, um, buds, I do the poppy mm -hmm. leaves, and then I do the parrot tulips, the parrot tulip buds, and the tulip leaves. So you get a lot of okay. um, a, a lot of different techniques, a lot of different forms of these flowers. Mm -hmm. And for me, I like to really pack it in with information, just so that you guys have um, you know a lot to to grasp and learn from me. Uh huh. That is great. I think that's something that Craftsy is really good at too. Is just yeah. making sure that everything is just crammed full of, of information. You can watch a crafty class hundreds of times and, and pick something up every time. <laughs> Very true. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, you're you're probably gonna be teaching, you know, the, the dusting and all of, you know, everything that goes along with that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So everything from step one to step ten or however many <laughs> steps however many. there are. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, I basically walk you through every step to, to achieve a lifelike looking flower. Awesome. But I also, I also share with you some cool um, whimsical fantasy style flowers that you can create with uh, the parrot, tulip, and poppy cutters as well. Great. Yeah. 
All right. I think that one of the things that gets skipped over a lot is coloring flowers. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a crucial part of making a flower actually look real. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I think that's a a really big part, and I'm glad that you're teaching that. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, let's see. And then we've got a picture of you with your cake all, well, not all finished, but you're you're placing. Starting the, on it. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I just I just love how they're just kind of some are laying a little bit off to one side and uh -huh. standing up and but like you said organic I, I just yes. I, I love that yeah very organic and before anyone starts to panic <laughs> that, <laughs> that bottom tier is styrofoam it's not real cake uh, <laughs> you know I feel um, you know that that was part of the baseboard. And then the cake, the actual mm -hmm. uh, other tiers were actually set on top of that. So don't worry, you're not going to consume any of part of the baseboard. Um, you know, I, I always practice food safety, uh, yes. especially with cakes and sugar flowers and whenever people's health is involved. Mm -hmm. So the, that bottom tier is actually part of the baseboard itself. So that's where those flowers are being inserted. Awesome. Do you have any tips for anybody that's trying to get, I mean, because you see those beautiful sprays of flowers that go up around, you know, a, a cake, mm -hmm. and, you know, a, how, do you, how do you get that accomplished without, you know, sticking flowers all over in a cake? Do you have any tips for anybody or, or anything? I'm really, uh, the way I approach things usually is... Um, you know, I have to have a vision in my mind, and then once the cake is stacked and decorated, then I kind of pick spots where um, I like to start. But mm -hmm. um, whenever I insert flowers into a cake, I usually use the large boba straws. So I Perfect. stick those into the cake and um, pipe a little bit of royal icing or even um, coating chocolate, and then I insert. that's mm -hmm. where I insert the, the wires, just so that the wires aren't actually inside of the cake. I, you know, I, I, I've heard this, um, you know, being spread throughout um, just the different ways of being able to actually insert a, a flower into a cake without actually having the, the stem go mm -hmm. in, you know, and so this is, the, it's something that has been talked a lot about lately, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's a good thing because we do need to practice food safety, mm -hmm. and, you know, I... I know that a lot of people worry about sticking, you know, their flowers into the cakes. So, you know, having good ways to to solve that problem and still accomplish the design that you have in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of saying, "Oh, well, I can only put them up here and then mm -hmm. here and then, you know, and or or it has to be in this little section because that's the only place where I can put styrofoam or, mm -hmm. you know, it, to be able to have different options is really is really nice. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, there's always a way. There's always a way. You know, I, that's how I truly feel about anything and cake design in general. You know, there, there's always a way to get around things. And uh -huh. usually it's, <laughs> it involves Home Depot and your creative <laughs> mind. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, that, is, that is so true. That's the way I feel too. You know, if someone comes to me with a design, I want this. I just okay. There's got to be a way to figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll we'll figure it out. And like you like you said, Home Depot is our friend. I know yes. that just about anybody that has done a cake that is you know sculptured or you know just structurally challenging at mm -hmm. all, Home Depot is is mm -hmm. where where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Awesome. Okay, and then we've got a picture of the final cake. And if you take the crafty class, this is, I mean, you can do this. This yes. is so pretty, so yes. pretty. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I just love this. I, I love the way you do your tulips. I, I, I always have been a fan of your tulips. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so they're, they're really pretty, gorgeous. And the poppies, just, ah, oh, love them. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've always been a fan of, like I said, jewel tone and saturated colors. And, you know, it's kind of a, 
I guess you can say it's kind of an ombre. You know, it goes into like greens to yellows to like a little touch of orangey pinks on top of the tulips, and then it works its way up to that bright, vibrant orange. Mm -hmm. And I just think on that white cake, it really pops and adds um, just such a, a vibrance, and um, it just makes you smile. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I notice about your flowers that uh, I need to work on <laughs> is being brave enough and bold enough to put those, you know, bold splashes of color onto your flowers. Mm -hmm. I, I try to blend them in so much that you know, that I miss out on that just really bright, vibrant, exciting, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I you, like I said, you do a wonderful job. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, I, definitely something I could work on, <laughs> but I, I think that, yeah, I, I think that uh, me as well as a lot of other people, too, are afraid to add that color that, that just really, because mm -hmm. those tulips just pop. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, it, you just kind of have to go with it, and, and like you said, be brave. Uh -huh. And um, I mean, you have to learn or start somewhere. You know, we all we all have a starting point, and um, we all have an aesthetic. And like I said, I really like that, that deep, vibrant, bold uh, color that uh, that I bring to sugar flowers. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then here's. Here's you with your beautiful yes. cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I, yeah, I just am so excited about this class. I'm, I really am. <laughs> oh, I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> oh, good. Um, okay, so before we move on to the question and answer portion, we have a recipe that you're going to share with us. And, yes. you know, I have to, I have to admit cookies have not been as easy for me as cake. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I, I guess I'm just, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm picky about my cake too, but mm -hmm. with cookies they have to be, you know, the right amount of chewy to crunchy to, you know, soft to, you know, I, I guess I'm just really particular about my cookies. No, so. I, I am right there with you. I, I don't really enjoy crispy chocolate chip cookies. You know, mm -hmm. I like a crisp, like a crispy outer crust, but a soft, chewy center. Oh, like that's that's what yes. I like. Yes. And with this recipe, you're gonna get that. What do you think it is about this recipe that makes it that way, or is it the technique in which you bake it, or it, you know, do you have any really good secret tips for that? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of factors into get like making the perfect cookie. Um, I think the oven has to be preheated for um, you know, at least half an hour before you actually bake, start baking the cookies. Okay. But also, you know, the, the recipe ratios play a big role in that. And if you look at the recipe, you'll notice that there's cornstarch in the actual recipe. And the cornstarch actually adds a lightness, but also uh, keeps that chewy, soft, doughy uh, texture in a cookie that I enjoy so much. Awesome. I, I love that idea of adding cornstarch. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. almost, yeah, I mean, almost makes it more, I don't know, I've heard that you can take flour and add cornstarch to make it more of a cake flour. Yes. So it's kind of along the same lines of, mm -hmm. you know, maybe substituting out your flour for a cake flour kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. True. So, yeah. True. And, and I also find that the creaming process is very important, too. You really want Definitely. to cream the butter and the sugars um, until they're light and fluffy. Um, because that adds, you know, air into the, the cookie dough, as we all know. Um, but it also uh, breaks down the sugar a little bit, and mm -hmm. it starts dissolving the sugar, which turns into a syrup, uh, which gives you that soft, doughy, uh, chewy texture. Very cool. Yeah, you know, that's something that I have, have learned along the way. You know, when I first started uh -huh. baking and stuff, I, I, I don't know, I... I always um, baked as a kid. My mom always was, you know, baking things, but we we didn't really follow the you have to cream this and then you mm -hmm. you do this, do this. We just, you know, threw it all together, threw it in the <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I have found throughout the years that that is really important, mm -hmm. you know. And I found I found that through baking cakes, you know, that 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 portion of it, you know, the creaming and then, you know, the adding the flour and the, you know, just the, the whole method of, of cake baking, it's, it all works and, and fits into cookie making also. Yes. You know, that, that you have to follow those same, 
the same guidelines mm -hmm. yeah, for cookie it's, making. Yeah, it's you know it's baking science, and I'm mm -hmm. a total total nerd when it comes to baking science. <laughs> you know, I, I love it. I enjoy it. <laughs> I love that. You know, what? I am the same way. I I I didn't do well in science in school, honestly, <laughs> but. But being able to say this is this is scientific, it really uh -huh. is, and there's a reason for everything. There's a reason for doing this and doing uh -huh. that and and everything, and it's it's science, and I love it. I feel like a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? No, no, not okay. at all. <laughs> and, and, and in particular, what I like about this recipe is the addition of the cocoa nibs. Um, it's a specialty oh. item. Um, you can usually get them like at Sur La Table. Um, Trader Joe's carries them. You can even order them online. Um, but I like that added crunch, and it adds a little bit of bitterness, which I like, because cookies, you know, after several bites can be really sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and it just adds that nice bitter crunch um, instead of, you know, the whole walnut or pecan nutty type thing. It's just a nice different texture to the cookie. I love that. That's a really mm -hmm. good idea. Really mm -hmm. good idea. Yeah. Um, okay, so chocolate nibs. I don't think I've ever cooked with chocolate nibs or baked with chocolate nibs. No, but it's actually like the husk of um, like the cocoa nib, of the cocoa oh, okay. pod, um, and it's just basically roasted and ground up. So they kind of look like mini chocolate chips. Um, and if you eat one, it's very crunchy. It has, you know, um, a light chocolate flavor. But um, I, I think, um, like, the best way to, I guess, give you an example of, like, the, the overall flavor is it has, like, a coffee taste to it. Mm -hmm. oh, um, yeah. But I find it to be very enjoyable. And if you don't like cocoa nibs, you could always just substitute cocoa nibs for nuts. Yeah. Well, and nuts are good, too. Yes, yes. <laughs> yep. Well, thank you for the recipe. These are, these look, they look amazing, so. Oh, good. Yeah, you guys have to all try them out. I think this is the third Definitely. time I've given you guys a recipe. Yes, and they're, uh -huh. I mean, you did beignets one time. Although, yeah, the, the beignets uh -huh. with, awesome. um, with a salted caramel, and then before that, it was the lemon lavender shortbread, which yes. I oh. really enjoy. Yum. Love those. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You, yeah, you've shared some really good recipes. So <laughs> I'm sure this one will be just as good. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I'm excited so. to try it out. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's get some questions answered. For those of you that um, haven't answer, asked, a, asked a question yet, um, we're going to go ahead and... Um, start that portion. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask them just in the little chat box to your your right. Um, if you came in late, you can just click on that little uh, tab that says ask a question or, or chat, I think it says. It says chat. And you can go in there and, and enter your question. So um, yeah, make sure you get in your questions so that we can get them answered. Um, okay, so our first question is... Oh, back to the, the gum paste part, um, where where you were talking about adding water to the to your gum paste. You just uh -huh. dip it in water. Uh -huh. What the question is? What does the water do to the gum paste? The water really just softens the gum paste because out of the container it comes pretty firm. Um, so I just recommend that you condition the gum paste and soften it to your liking. Um, like I said earlier, you can't add too much water to the gum paste. It's not going to change the consistency or the, the chemical makeup of it. Um, you can always add glycerin, uh, but then that requires you going out and spending some money. Uh, mm -hmm. And why do that when you have water uh, <laughs> so readily available? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you, if, you find out, if you find that your um, gum paste is starting to dry out a little bit mm -hmm. and hard to work with. Is there a way to, to bring that back? Can you add more water maybe? or? Yeah, so I find um, like the gum paste that you use over and over again tends to change. It, it usually gets a lot stiffer in consistency. So what I do is I take the old piece of gum paste and add equal parts of fresh gum paste to that. Okay. and then soften it up with more water, and that usually brings it back to life. Perfect. I know that uh, I've had to use some, you know, 
some gum paste that I didn't really want to use uh -huh. at points. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's hard to work with because you get to a point where, you know, it's just getting so hard and, and you just there's nothing you can do to bring it back. Do. And so, yeah. you know, you just have to I guess chuck it and it, yeah. it's wasteful and I hate I, to do that. <laughs> I know it is. And and I find with other brands um, like the more you work with it, you know, it gets harder, um, mm -hmm. and it also loses its elasticity. And uh, with my gum paste, that won't happen. Perfect. That is wonderful because we all we all could use a little extra time, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Our next question is: um, Is Fonderfit good for modeling figurines? Yes, it is. Uh, I find that Fonderific is a great product for so many things. Um, modeling figurines, what I like to do is I'll roll out sheets of Fonderific, cut out whatever surf surface design I'm going to need for any particular cake, lay it, on, lay it out on a sheet tray, um, just put a little piece of parchment paper over it, put it off on a speed rack, and when the cake is ready for me to actually decorate, I can pull the Fonderific and then it still has a pliability and I can start decorating the cake. Um, for figurines, it actually works very well because it has that a little bit of elasticity um, and it actually holds its shape very well. Um, if you find you're having some issues with it being a little bit soft, then what you can do is you can throw it into the refrigerator for about 10 minutes just to firm up a little bit and then you can get back to working, it, um, working with it as usual. Oh, cool. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to, you know, talk badly about other <laughs> other gum pastes, but there there are some that I've used that it, it they just, when you're trying to make a figurine out of it, the center of it never dries properly. Mm -hmm. And then it, you know, it just it just doesn't, and it can crack, it can, you know, and, and then I have problems with my figurines. And so, yes. you know, it, if, you know, if you get a, a good quality gum paste that, you know, will actually set and do what mm -hmm. it's supposed to do, yes. that's great. <laughs> yeah, with, and with the fonderific, whether it's the gum paste or the fondant or the modeling chocolate, you're not going to have any of those issues, you know, whereas other brands, like you said, if you make a figurine, the outside will start to dry while the inside is still wet, um, and that inside, because it's still wet, um, it starts a fermentation process, so all the gases don't have anywhere to escape, and that's why you get a lot of the cracking. Awesome. Okay. Good tip. Good to mm -hmm. know. Okay. Um, let's see. Someone says, do you prefer to work with tinted gum paste and then accent sorry, accentuate the color? Do you start with white or what? I, you know, it really depends on the flower. Like for the flowers that I made in my Craftsy class, um, I like to tint my gum paste um, uh, a shade or two lighter than the actual color I'm going for. Um, I just find you get a better result that way. You can always, if you're afraid of doing that, you can always just use white gum paste and then either airbrush or petal dust the petals. But I find you don't get that deep uh, jewel tone or rich color saturation um, that I tend to like. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think really it just comes down to personal preference. Okay, great. Okay, um, someone asked about you know the the molds that you had for drawing your flowers. They said, could you use an actual plastic Easter egg as a flower former? Yeah, you can. You definitely can. Um, you can use plastic Easter egg formers. You can use, um, if you go to like a crate and barrel or any kind of home supply place, um, they often have those um, like deviled egg holders, ceramic deviled egg holders. You can use those as well. Nice. That's mm -hmm. smart. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Great there's, idea. Always, there's always a way, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, one thing I do want to mention here, um, I think it's really important for everyone to um, be really careful about the, the um, more fibrous things that you use. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people will use, like, egg crates. Um, yeah. uh, you know, that I, I would definitely recommend staying away from an egg crate. Unless it's like a plastic one that you can wash, mm -hmm. um, these other ones you can you can contaminate it with salmonella. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. not a good idea. So just I I would recommend finding the more 
um, things, something that you can wash is what I is what I really would recommend. So. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay. Um, someone asks, are the color kits available in Canada? Yes. The color kits are available in Canada. Um, Icing Inspirations is currently carrying them. Oh, cool. um, so you can go directly to their website or uh, give them a call, and Chrissy or Justin will ship them directly to you. Okay. Perfect. Um, here's another question. Do you let your flowers dry and then dust them, or do you dust them before the gum paste has dried? I, I like to allow my petals to dry uh, completely, uh, preferably overnight. And then uh, once they've dried, then I like to add all the, the coloring, whether it's petal dust or airbrush. I mm -hmm. find that when the petals are still soft, that you don't get a nice, uh, smooth, fluid application when you're adding mm -hmm. petal dust. Uh, so I find it best to actually allow your petals to dry completely before you do uh, add any color. Yeah, I I completely agree with that. You know, mm -hmm. I've I've actually tried to rush things before, and then you get patches of wet and patches of dry, yes. and then you end up with patches of deeper color where it's more wet, mm -hmm. and then a, a lighter color where it's not as much, and it it just doesn't it doesn't like you said you don't get a nice even, yeah. smooth, mm -hmm. the way that you want it. <laughs> yeah. It, it just doesn't look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good way to explain it. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, someone asks, do you make any flowers without molds, just by hand? Oh, yeah. You know, most of my uh, roses I don't use any molds for. Um, mm -hmm. I just find that the veining on roses is so light and delicate anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I just find it that it's not necessary most of the time, depending on the size of the flower, of course. Uh -huh. um, and then, you know, calla lilies, I don't usually use any sort of molds or veiners. Um, again, because I feel that the veining on the calla lily is so, like, soft. Um, and if you do add a vein to a calla lily, it just it looks awkward. It doesn't look natural. All right. Um, here's a good question. Someone says, uh, "Does softening the gum paste with water softening the gum paste with water is it better than using Crisco?" Yes. Uh, now, if you add Crisco to soften your gum paste, what's going to happen is you will end up changing the the chemical makeup of the the gum paste. You'll lose a lot of the elasticity because you're adding fat to something. Fat is usually um, it it disturbs um, the pH balance of, of the gum paste. And um, you're not going to get um, elasticity. Uh, you'll lose the elasticity. Um, so I, I recommend just using the water to, um, to soften the gum paste um, and just using shortening on your hand to prevent anything from sticking. OK, great. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> of course I agree with you. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Someone asks, "Do you use egg whites to put your flowers together?" And they said, "I know others do." Um, is that something that you do? Yeah. You know, this is another um, an a another answer where um, it involves preference. Again, mm -hmm. for me, it's about food safety, and I just don't like the idea of using egg whites as glue because that egg white is protein, and protein um, gets rancid, and it I mean, it, it goes bad if it's mm -hmm. not um, fresh or kept well or uh, just like anything, any food item does. Uh, so I tend to stick with either just some water or uh, gum glue that's made with Hylos. Okay, perfect. Okay, someone asks, um, let's see, do you, do you know, um, can you make these flowers with marshmallow fondant? I, I've actually never worked with Marshall on it. <laughs> <laughs> that is an interesting question. <laughs> it is a very interesting question. I mean, I, you know, I've, I, I don't have an answer to that. Uh, I don't know how the workability is as far as um, the drying of marshmallow fondant is, so I can't really give you an educated answer. Okay. The, Sorry. You know, you know I... I Maybe if you added Ty, you know, Tylos or CMC, I, it might. Yeah, it would, it, it would probably work that way. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting question. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone tries it and knows that it works, then go ahead and let us know. <laughs> yeah. and, and to be honest, in general, I don't really like using fondant um, to make sugar flowers with. I just find mm -hmm. that using fondant takes a lot longer for the petals to dry, mm -hmm. and the flowers aren't as strong if they're made with fondant versus gum paste. Because gum paste, that's its primary purpose, is for sugar flowers or any kind of decorative work. And fondant mm -hmm. is primarily for eating, so. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. I, I, w I always recommend using gum paste over, over fondant. You can get it so much thinner. You can get it, mm -hmm. you know, to, to do what you want a lot better, and it dries better. Yeah, and, uh, so. I agree. And, and some people add tylose or gum trag or CMC to their fondant. And yes, it does um, stiffen and allow your fondant to dry. But again, you know, I, I think fondant should be used primarily for eating and covering cakes, and gum paste should be used for sugar flowers and decorative work. I agree. Agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, someone asks about the brushes that you use to dust your flowers. Do you have a specific brand or, or something to look for when you're looking for a brush? Uh, yeah. What I, what I look for is the bristles. Um, I like natural bristles that are soft um, versus the synthetic. I find that the synthetic doesn't hold on to the color, and you don't get a nice, uh, um, smooth application whenever you're dusting with them. Uh, when you use a natural hair soft bristle brush, you're going to get a much better application. The bristles hold on to the, the petal dust a lot better. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you get a better overall look. OK. All right, we're going to only take one more question. Sorry for those of you guys that wanted more questions. And these are great questions, by the way. You guys are they awesome are. today. <laughs> really know, good I, questions. Yeah, that one person stumped me on the marshmallow fondant. And that's <laughs> very rare. <laughs> Love that. But really, great questions today. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. One, someone asks, um, how do you handle humidity issues with your flowers? So you can do a couple of things. You can get um, a dehumidifier and have that in the corner of your bakery or uh, studio somewhere, and that basically draws out all of the humidity in your room. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, you'll have to empty out the dehumidifier because there's going to be a lot of liquid. Um, but I also find that limestone or silica gel uh, also works very well. Uh, but my gum paste actually holds up very well to, to high humidity. Oh, uh, it's produced in uh, Savannah, Georgia, where it's pretty much 90% uh, and higher in humidity. But I've used my gum paste in Florida. I've used my gum paste in New York, in Chicago, Texas, and I've never had any issues with it. Great. Wonderful. You know, I, I've heard of some people that... Um, that have issues with putting the, their gum paste in the refrigerator mm -hmm. with humidity. They mm -hmm. take it out and it melts. Is there, is that basically the same idea? Would silica yeah. gel in the in your refrigerator help? Yes, um, you can do silica gel or just put a little bit of limestone in a in a container and just cover it with a little bit of foil. Poke some holes in it, and then that limestone will just kind of draw all the moisture from the air. Um, also, uh, what I recommend doing is if you're going to refrigerate your uh, fully decorated cakes, is put them in a box um, because if the cake is in a box and in your walk-in, the moisture is going to be absorbed by the cardboard and not so much by uh, the cake. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. That's great. Great answers. Great questions. Great answers. Yeah. So in the meantime, is there anything you want to add about your Craftsy class or anything that you want to you know, talk about that would be useful to everybody? Um, you know, aside from my newest class, which was just launched today, the Spring and Summer Sugar Flowers, um, you know, it's packed with a lot of information. Um, there's a lot of detail that I, that I touch on. Um, you're getting more than just the procedure of the sugar flowers themselves. Um, I touch on how to add color, how to assemble, um, and then I give you cool and interesting ways um, of adding these sugar flowers to your cake. You know, like I had uh, spoken about before, uh, it's, it's an inspiration from my Sweet 16 Cake Challenge cake, and I'm bringing that to you. And I think that 
is going to be very interesting for most people mm-hmm. because you don't really see it very often at all, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, so I hope I hope you all enjoy it, and I hope you learn a lot. And yeah, go out and get it. Awesome. Oh, I, I you know what? It's just an amazing, an amazing thing. I love the. I love the way that the flowers are just so. I, I don't know. Just they can just the movement. The mm-hmm. movement is just so beautiful. And I am a really big fan of stems and everything. Mm-hmm. I, I, there's something about the the beautiful stems to the mm-hmm. to the flowers. Hopefully, you guys will. Uh, well, I I shouldn't say hopefully. I know you guys will enjoy the class. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can it. guarantee it. <laughs> I can guarantee it. James is an amazing person and a huge talent. And and really nice. So oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be it'll be a really great a great class for you guys to have in in your crafty lineup. And I know I'm going to add it to mine. So okay. thank you, James, for coming and talking to us today for all the great tips and good information. Um, you're well, thank you're wonderful. You. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here with you, Amelia. Oh, thank you. Until I, next time. Yes, exactly. You'll you'll definitely have to come back again. <laughs> We'd love to have you. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll we will talk to you all next week. I guess we would. Yeah, we have another cake food training lined up for next week, and it'll be great. So uh, we will see you all next week. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>